The international banking elite are at it again, and this time they're attacking Ukraine. As the people are rioting in the streets, causing bloodshed in every corner of the city, they are now being attacked financially. Let's get into that right now. Ukraine vows to protect bank deposits as government vote delayed. Now, the individual and the general public, they might think, oh, look at that. They're coming in to uh, support them. This is a great idea. Everything's going to be just fine. I'll explain to you how I've analyzed this uh, when I publish my book and how this is going to happen. It happens the same every time. What they're talking about is protecting the savings. That's just like the FDIC in the U.S. See, the FDIC is a total fraud. They say that they're insurance to bail out any of the depositors, but they could not even bail out one bank. If everyone in one bank pulled their money out because they feared um, a collapse or some sort of other scenario, they would not be able to bail them out. It's a fraud. They only have a fraction of a percent of the total deposits. This is a joke. And here they are in Ukraine, they're worried, they're concerned, and rightfully so, they pulled out as much as 7% of the deposits, and instantly the government came in and said, well, well, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, everything's under control. Let's take a look further into this. I got really worried when I read this article because of some things that they said here, and historically, how this all comes together. They're talking about bailing out the banks. What else is new? Whenever there's a bank bailout, there is always an international connection and undoubtedly, invariably, the bankers get more power. It happens every single time without question, no matter what country around the world. This time, it just happens to be the Ukraine. And I thought to myself as I'm reading through, when they mentioned international, as soon as they said that word, international donors in this case here, I knew they were talking about the IMF. In fact, they said, we're in talks with the IMF on changing the investment climate so that investors come to Ukraine and believe in stability. There is no such thing as IMF and stability in the same sentence. It can't happen. It's never happened. In fact, the purpose of the IMF is to maintain instability. And I'm going to get into that in a moment here. IMF's four steps to damnation. And I am actually very surprised that they, the Guardian actually posted this article. This is by Greg Palast. You may have read his book. It's an excellent book. Highly recommend it. And they were talking about Joseph Sticklitz, who I also recommend reading his book as well, Globalization and Its Discontents. And what he, I love what he says right here. I'll highlight it. The New World Economic order and you know what that means and they talked about the imf riot i'll highlight that for you as well the imf riot now what's happened in the ukraine may or may not be considered the imf riot of course i don't have that insider details however what they do is they destabilize a nation on many fronts one including the financial system and then they raise interest rates to extreme levels they can never pay it back that's what happened in greece they make it so that it is in possible to pay back and the only way that they will pay it back is if you go on their rules and their rules alone so now in the greece for example they had the troika other bodies other than the government deciding who will do what how will it happen whose assets belong where and so on and so forth and then when the country's back is broken when they're at their last last drop of blood in in their bodies the last breath in their lungs they begin to riot because that's all they have left not that i'm agreeing with it i'm just saying how this works and in fact he talked right here about that the imf squeezes the last drop of blood out of them they turn up the heat until finally the whole cauldron blows up and in specifically here in Indonesia in 1998, they're saying about, he's talking about the 
exploding into riots. What have I been warning about when they, in this case, eliminated the fuel and fuel subsidies? As soon as the government stops handing out the welfare, the public is going to riot. 50 million people in the U.S. alone are on food stamps. How many people are on food assistance? Some sort of food assistance? That's right, it's over 100 million people. And if they pull the plug on that, if they pull that crutch, what do you think is going to happen. Joseph Stiglitz is talking about this. Greg Palace is talking about this. And when I released my book, I talked about it as well. I said specifically, the Greek people have rioted in the streets because they are rejecting the austerity imposed upon them. And it got into the IMF looting the countries and other things as well. My book is not the topic of this video. I did say specifically that the IMF's power will increase as the crisis worsens. That also has happened. Look at what's happening around us. They are colluding together, the governments, the IMF, all these international bodies. And who are they doing this? They're doing it not against foreign enemies. They're doing it against the people in these countries. Why? Because international institutions, the UN, the World Bank, the IMF, the G20, the G8, they're all against us. They are not for us. They never make a law that ever helps us. Davos and Switzerland, people watch it and think it's the greatest thing in the world. People think that watching whoever's on TED talks is the smartest individual and we need to listen to them and they will tell us all the answers and we can just do whatever they say because they're so smart and we'll just give everything to them we'll give everything to the technocrats no longer do we need elections let's just put a technocrat in charge and that's going to solve everything well i'll tell you right now that hasn't solved anything that's just making it worse we're giving up our power to the interna international institutions these are supranational entities and where has the the thought that we actually have elected anyone at least we had these fraudulent elections at least on the face value everything is okay but now they are allowing international bodies to decide what happens financially in the companies and because they can do that they have the power to manipulate our government to manipulate the congress the parliament wherever you live this is not how it's supposed to happen and then you wonder what's going to happen i've told you a hundred times please listen to me please spread the or make your own videos, write your own books, do anything, please. They're going to take our money from the banks. They're going to do it. They're dipping their hands in country by country. They're making laws. They're giving us warnings. What are they going to do? They're going to steal our savings. And they want us poor. They want to pull the crutch out of this system. And they want to dominate us. And I do not want to be a victim. I do not want you to be a victim here. Please take a look at this deeper. Analyze it. I don't, I don't care if you don't read my book. I don't care if you don't listen to this video create another video on your own don't share my video share your own videos write a blog talk to your friends and family do anything you can hold up signs in the street corner talk to your friends talk to anyone who will listen 